Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Spring Hill Baptist Church Wednesday evening Bible study. And I'm Brother Don, the pastor at Spring Hill Baptist Church, and it's just good to have you with us and good to be here. And uh, as you can tell, I'm feeling better, and uh, I'm excited about feeling better, too. So um, uh, as of I announced yesterday through a, um, a, a post on the church's Facebook page, I, I plan on... Uh, being in the pulpit uh, this Sunday morning, Lord willing. So I'm um, looking forward to being back at church and being back with God's people. And uh, I just thank you for your prayers. I uh, thank you for your love. Uh, Charlene and I are both much better. And uh, we're, we're ready for everything to go back to whatever normal is going to be. Amen. So... Again, I just thank you. There will be no Sunday school, no adult Sunday school this Sunday, okay? We're going to wait and start it the following Sunday, and I'll announce that uh, from the pulpit Sunday morning. But I will be uh, in church with you all Sunday morning, and uh, Lord willing, and everything stays the same. And I, I just want to say again also to uh, Brother Steve Uton, thank you, brother. You are a blessing, sir. And uh, Spring Hill will always hold you dear, and will always hold you in our prayers. So we just we just appreciate you and Sister Paula, and your friendship, and uh, God bless you, brother. So, and you will be back. Trust me, you will be back. So, okay, enough of that. So just uh, look forward to being in church Sunday morning. And uh, wouldn't it be wonderful if the house was packed Sunday morning? Amen. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Okay, tonight for our Bible study, let's get back into the book of Ruth. As I, as I said when we started this, I wanted to uh, hold off on our, our prophetic studies, the major prophetic passages in Scripture that we were doing on Wednesday nights until I get back. I didn't want to do that this way. So we, we're looking at the book of Ruth. And uh, I chose the book of Ruth for a couple of reasons. One, uh, I've really enjoyed reading and meditating on it during these past couple of weeks when I've been kind of locked in, and and uh, it, it's it's it spoke to me a lot. It, it it has just it's been good, and I wanted to share some insights and share some things out of the book of Ruth with you that uh, also that I have enjoyed over the past couple of weeks. And so that's what we're looking at. And uh, as we get into this, this evening, let's have a word of prayer. And uh, let me get my, 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 there we go. Okay, let's, ha let's have a word of prayer and then we'll read our text and, and we'll study a little bit. Father God, Lord, we just stand before you this evening, gathered together as Spring Hill Baptist Church over this technology that you've given us and Spring Hill's friends. And Father, we pray that you would just bless our time together to study, to hear your voice, and to know your word. Lead us and guide us, Lord, in this time, and let this word reach out not only to us to strengthen us and embolden us in these days that we live, but to others, Lord. Let people be saved. Father, let this word touch hearts and change lives. Lord, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Ruth, we're still in chapter one. And uh, if you'll just <clears throat> bear with me, I want to read uh, beginning in verse six, and I want to read through the end of the chapter. That's what we're going to talk about uh, this evening. And uh, so we'll begin reading in verse six. <clears throat> and... Uh, I was asked the other day uh, what version of the Bible or translation I'm reading, and I'm reading from the the Christian Standard Bible, and uh, I've, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I really like it, so uh, that's what I'll be reading from, and I've been reading and preaching from it here for a little while now, so uh, if you want to get it on your um, iPhone, your iPad, or if you want to get a copy of it, that's, that's what it is, the Christian Standard Bible, and uh, I'm I like it, so that's what I'll be using. Ruth chapter 1, beginning in verse 6. So she and her daughters-in-law set out to return from the territory of Moab 
because she had heard in Moab that the Lord had paid attention to his people's need by providing food for them. She left the place where she had been living, accompanied by her two daughters-in-law, and traveled along the road leading back to the land of Judah. Naomi said to them, Each of you go back to your mother's home. May the Lord show kindness to you as you have shown to the dead and to me. May the Lord grant each of you rest in the house of a new husband. And she kissed them and wept loudly. They said to her, We insist on returning with you to your people. But Naomi replied, Return home, my daughters. Why do you want to go with me? Am I able to have more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. Go, for I am too old to have another husband. And even if I thought there was still hope for me to have a husband tonight and to bear sons, would you be willing to wait for them to grow up? Would you restrain yourselves from remarrying? No, my daughters. My life is too bitter for you to share because the Lord's hand is turned against me. Again, they wept loudly and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. Naomi said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Follow your sister-in-law. But Ruth replied, don't plead with me to abandon you or to return and not follow you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord punish me and do so severely if anything but death separates you and me. When Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped talking to her. The two of them traveled until they came to Bethlehem. And when they entered Bethlehem, the whole town was excited about their arrival, and the local women explained, exclaimed, Can this be Naomi? Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara, she answered, for the Almighty has made me very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why do you call me Naomi, since the Lord has opposed me, and the Almighty has afflicted me? So Naomi came back from the territory of Moab with her daughter-in-law, Ruth the Moabitess. And this last sentence in verse 21, they arrived in Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. Now remember, what caused all of this is they lived in Bethlehem, which was, Bethlehem means house of bread. But there was a famine, so there was no bread in the house of bread. And rather than stay in the land of provision, the land of promise, they chose to leave and go to Moab and live there. During the time they were there, a lot of things happened, a lot of death, a lot of problems. Now they've heard that there's bread back in the house of bread, and they're coming back. And we begin to see God's provision. We begin to see God honoring his word just like he always does. And it says they arrived in Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest, the provision, the bread. Have you ever, I've done this two or three times. I've been involved in a wreck or two over my lifespan. Uh, some of them not my fault. One of them was my fault, but nevertheless. And as you reflect back on things, it's sometimes that this is at least the way I work. Here we are in this whole big world that we live on. And all of these things, all of these people and all of this going on, and it just so happened that those two vehicles met at the same point in space and time at the same time. I believe in God's provision. I believe in God's sovereignty. And I believe that even though many things that we see happen and we see them as, as, as maybe even we see them as chance, you know, this just happened. No, I, I don't think so. I think a lot of things happen and God allows them to happen because of decisions we make. I, I do. 
But I think even in those decisions that we make, God is still on the throne. God is still in control and everything, Romans 8, 28, works for the good of those who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. So when I read that last verse right there, and it says that they arrived in Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest, and I think about how they had to travel from Moab, and they didn't just go jump in the car and travel four, five, six hours down the road. It wasn't like that. This was a journey on foot, and when they got there, there's God's provision. Wow. Okay. Now, remember, this, this started, verse 1, chapter 1, during the time of the judges. So we're looking at a time period that the Bible calls the time of the judges. And remember what I told you in Judges chapter 21 and verse 25. This is the description that the Lord gives us of the time of the judges. In those days... There was no king in Israel, and everyone did whatever seemed right to him. So this was a very godless time. It was a time when people weren't truly seeking the God of provision, the God of the house of bread. It was a time when people were doing whatever they wanted to. If it feels good, do it. If you think that's the right thing to do, do it. And we could characterize this in many ways, uh, even in our own society today, the world that we live in today, in particular with the, if it feels good, do it. But the other characterization that I want you to really get a hold of, especially in this section of the book of Ruth, is this. All roads lead to heaven. It doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere in your belief, okay? Now, to me, that characterizes our world and our situation today more than anything else, okay? And we have so many people, even so-called Christians, church members, that subscribe to that philosophy rather than the true truth of the Word of God. And that is, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And so what it boils down to is everyone does what is right in their own eyes, meaning you are God. You decide, not God. You decide what is right. You decide how you interact with people, not God. And folks, if you subscribe to it really doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere, then you are being God. Because God, the almighty God, the God of Scripture, does not say that. I could, I could give you several, but I'll give you the two most common, most famous from Scripture. Number one, I quoted just a while ago, John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And then Jesus said, Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said, broad and wide is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be that enter therein but straight and narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. So what we see now in Naomi is she is subscribing to the world's point of view. She is, is trying to 
encourage and and in her way, she is trying to help her daughters-in-laws, Ruth and, and Orpah. She's trying to help them, but she's doing it according to the world's philosophy. And when you look at some of the things that 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 she tells them, and and one of the telltale things, as I pointed out last week in verse six and seven, it says that she had heard that there was bread in Bethlehem now. She didn't know that. She didn't have the kind of relationship with the Lord God that God would say, okay, Naomi, here's your provision, go over here. She was out of God's will. She had left the place of provision. She had left the place that God had had called them to. Now, granted, she did it following her husband. So her husband is, is, is more guilty in my opinion, than she is. But she is now in the place to help these girls and to guide them. But rather than tell them, look, I know you're Moabites. I know you've got your own gods. I know all of that. But let me tell you about the true God, the God that created heaven and earth, the God that gives life. And if you'll follow me, I'll lead you back to that God and where we need to be. She doesn't do that. She subscribes to the world's point of view and philosophy. She tells them, she says, look, go back. Go back to your families. Go back to your, even in one place, she uses the word gods when she's talking about Orpah has gone back in verse 15. She said to to Ruth, she said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. So when I read that, I see her, I I see her acknowledging the other gods. Now, now granted in their society, that's the way they lived. They, They all, every nation had its own set of gods. And, you know, every time they had a war, every time they had something going on, it was this God against that God. You can read that all the way through Scripture. Uh, There was one time, if I'm not mistaken, it was the Philistines that came against Israel, and Israel won the battle on the mountains, and so they decided, well, let's go down in the valley. Maybe their God's not strong. You know, and that's, that's the way they looked at things. But if you are a servant, as Naomi was supposed to be, she was an Israelite. She was the chosen people. She had access. She had inheritance in the house of bread, God's provision. She should have been willing to stand up and to say, hey, follow me. I will show you the way. But she didn't. She compromised. Now, the girls, for whatever reason... Ruth refuses to leave Naomi, and we're going to see that reason here in a minute. But Orpah, she did. And I, I like the way the CSB puts it here. She said that, that Orpah kissed her mother and, and left, but Ruth clung to Naomi. So here's Ruth, okay? Ruth married into Naomi's family. She married the oldest son, Malon. When she married into that family, she committed her life to them. And when she made that commitment, she took that vow. There was no going back. She was settled. That was it. She made a choice. And she was going to live by that choice. And according to her own words, which we're going to read again here in a minute, she was willing to die by that choice. She even invoked the Lord, which they did did things like that back then. She said in verse 17, may the Lord punish me and do so severely if anything but death separates you and me. That was her heart. That was her faith. That was her commitment not only to Naomi, but to the God of Naomi into which she had married. 
And folks, when I read, I see our commitment to Christ. When you came to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you were at a point where a couple of things had to happen, okay? Number one, you had to finally realize you were a sinner. You were lost, dead in your trespasses and sins and separated from God, and that hell was your destination. And number two, you had to come to a point where you realized that Jesus Christ is the Savior. He is Lord and Savior. And without him, there was no hope, no help, and no salvation. That's where Ruth was. She had committed her life to not only this woman, but to this woman's gods. God, excuse me. Gods is the way that Naomi phrased it, but it is God. Now look at Naomi's attitude again. Naomi again in verse 13, she said, the hand of the Lord is against me. And we talked about that last week. We talked about what she thought, uh, the way that they viewed things. Uh, she said her life is bitter. Uh, you read on down in, in some the verses when she gets back to Bethlehem. In verse 20, she tells them, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. That's a throwback to the wanderings in the wilderness when they found the, the bitter water and the Lord had to sweeten it and provide water for them. She says, call me bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. She just had this, this outlook, this lack of faith. And you see in her that, that when, when Ruth begins to speak to her and when Ruth begins to express her, her faith to Naomi, Naomi doesn't have an answer for it. Look what it says, and 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 let's read this again because it, it it is it's one of it's the most one of the most beautiful passages of scripture. Probably this, and then First Corinthians chapter thirteen, the the love chapter. And it it's I'll give you the King James is quite a bit more poetic and all of those things, but I'm not into poetry. I'm into the word of God. I want to know. I want to hear. Listen, don't plead with me to abandon you or to return and not follow you. For wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. and There I will be buried. May the Lord punish me and do so severely if anything but death separates you and me. And when Naomi in verse 18 heard that, when Naomi saw Ruth's heart, a heart of love, a heart of commitment, a heart of faith, and I think Naomi realized also that this speech that Ruth is given here, this was not only to Naomi, it was to the God of Israel also. Naomi was professing her undying faith and her undying love and commitment for the God of Israel because that's the choice that she was making. And when Naomi is confronted with this kind of love and commitment and faith, Naomi had no answer for it. Look what it says. Verse 18, when Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped talking to her. Naomi had no answer for the faith and the commitment and the love of Ruth. And folks, when you as a child of God do not stand up for the truth of God, for the gospel of Jesus Christ, for the morality and the, the ways and precepts of the God of creation, then you have no answer to a lost and dying world. What are you going to tell them? Somebody comes to you in this day and age that we're living with all of the problems we're having, 
the economic problems, the supply problem, I mean, the, the COVID, I mean, just all of these things. Somebody comes to you and, and they, they can't take it. It, it. It's weighing down on them. They feel like their life is useless because the world has changed. What are you going to tell them? They're coming to you for a reason. What are you going to tell them? Oh, it'll be okay. Just be sincere. Just hold on. What are you going to tell them? Or will you be able, as this Moabite girl, not even a girl of the land of promise, not even a girl of the people of choice of God, but a Moabite girl, can you express faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and the truth of God the way that she did? You see, I, I see in Naomi, I see a bucket full of compromise all the way through everything that Naomi does and everything that Naomi says. Remember that she's going back to the house of bread because she heard there was bread. Well, she left the house of bread because she didn't trust the God of the house of bread. She got over in Moab. She lost everything she had. Now she heard. She doesn't even know for sure. She heard. And so she's going back. So you could look at this in two ways. You could look at it, number one, as compromise. You could look at it, number two, as, as she's going to take the easy way. Whichever way is going to be the easiest for her to get what she wants, that's where she's going to go. So how are you going to answer those that seek your help? You're supposed to be a Christian. You're supposed to be a, a church member. And when she saw this, this commitment, this faith, this love, not only toward her, but love toward God, a commitment that was willing to die in service and faithfulness to this God, she had no answer. She, I, I don't even think she could comprehend what was going on in Ruth's heart. Now, back to Ruth. This is how we win people to Christ, is when they see that love, that commitment, that devotion to the God of provision, to the God of creation, when they see that, that your heart is true and that you have a love for a savior and that and 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 I'm 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 going to say it even willing to die for that commitment now this death is going to come in 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 many ways okay uh, it, it could obviously lead to a physical death we see that all through scripture with God's people Apostle Paul, the greatest example, uh, John, uh, James, you know, all the way through the book of Acts, they were persecuted and they were mortared. But there is, to me, a greater death that is at stake here than physical death. Jesus said that if we are going to follow him, we must be willing to take up our cross and follow him, die to self. Here's the thing about taking up your cross. Your cross, folks, is not, and, and, and we, we've, this has been preached this way so many times, it's ridiculous. The cross is not a burden that you were called to bear. We're going to see that in verse 19 and verse 6, the, the journey, the travel. That's a burden, okay? Because as they traveled, you know, verse 19, it says the two of them traveled until they came to Bethlehem. When you travel, in particular back in those days, it indicates a journey. 
It indicates a hard journey. There are obstacles along the way. There are rivers to cross. There are um, mountains to climb, valleys to get through, thieves to deal with, robbers, lack of food, lack of water. Traveling the journey is difficult, and there are going to be obstacles, but that is not the cross. That's a burden. And the cross is not having to deal with, and I have no intentions of hurting anybody's feelings. I want you to know the truth. The cross is not having to deal with some type of debilitating sickness or disease. That's not your cross. My cross is not having had COVID and coming through that. My cross is not living with arthritis. My cross is not, that's not, that's a burden. That's an obstacle. That's things that we will face and deal with in this life. The cross is this. When a person, in particular, Jesus Christ, when he took up his cross, remember they, after they beat him, they made him take up his cross and carry it to the hill. He was dead. He was dead. There was no going back. There was no getting out of it. There was no hope. There was no help. So when Jesus reached down and took up that cross, he was a dead man walking. For you and me, when we take up our cross, we are saying, I am dead to the world. I died with Christ. What he's talking about when he says, if you're going to be my disciple, you must take up your cross and follow me. He is talking about your life, your desires, your needs, your drive to be successful in, in your career, all of those things. Lay it down. Your one desire now that you've taken up your cross is to serve the Lord Jesus Christ because you are dead to your life, to your desires. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Now here's the truth. Yet the life that I live is not me, but it's the life of Christ in me. Amen? That's taking up your cross. When you read this, and Ruth showed Naomi her heart, her love, her commitment, she was showing Naomi that Ruth had made a choice and everything else, she was dead to it. She was going to live this commitment, this choice she'd made. Now remember, she's Moabite, okay? She's leaving her father and mother, brothers and sisters, cousins, aunts, uncles. She is leaving everything that she has ever known because of a commitment that she has made, because of the cross, if you would, that she has taken up. And when Ruth speaks and Naomi hears this, again, Naomi had no answer. And the reason being is because it wasn't Ruth, but it was the truth that Ruth was presenting. Now, if it had been Ruth, Naomi could have continued to argue with her and probably eventually won the argument. She did it with Orpah. And Ruth probably could have eventually been persuaded to go back. So here's my point. This is how we win people to the Lord. People, this world, they don't need to see you. They need to see Jesus. And when Ruth 
said this, that's what Naomi was confronted with, was the truth of God, Jesus Christ, in particular for you and me. People don't need to see how much money I can make in this world and what I can do with it. People need to see what God can do with a life sold out to him, whether that life be in business, whether that life be in school as a teacher, whether that life be in the oil field, out on the rigs in the Gulf of Mexico. They don't need to see what you and I can do. They don't need our wisdom. They need to see Jesus. And the only way that they can see Jesus is if we die to self, take up our cross, and the life of the Lord Jesus Christ flow through us. And folks, that's what I see in Ruth. And I see that again because in this statement that she said, don't play with me to abandon you or return for wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you live, I will live. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. She was not only speaking that to Naomi. She was speaking that to the God of Naomi. And when Naomi saw that, she couldn't deal with it. And then, as we close, so, verse 22, so Naomi came back from the territory of Moab with her daughter-in-law, Ruth the Moabitess, and they arrived in Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. When they got back, and that's, that's the way I'm going to say it because that's what happened. When they got back on the road to the house of bread, to the place of God's provision, they begin to see God's provision. Okay, you say, well, apparently they did fairly decent in Moab. Well, apparently they ate while they were in Moab, but look at everything they lost. Look at Naomi's description. I went away full, but I came back empty. So I'm saying make a choice. When they went back, when they said in their heart that they were going to go back to the house of bread, back to the land of provision, they begin to see God's provision in their lives and in their circumstances again. Now remember, as I said just a while ago, they had to travel. They didn't just, okay, I'm in, um, I'm in Moab. I'm going to go to Bethlehem. I would love to be in Star Trek days, you know, the TV show Star Trek. You know what? Them transporters. I remember, whew, there were many a nights for years, and I'm, I'm just, I would go to church on Wednesday night and do Wednesday night Bible study, and then after Wednesday night Bible study, I would get in my truck, and I would drive all night to catch a helicopter Thursday morning to go offshore. And there was many a many a Wednesday night that I was wishing for a transporter. But folks, we ain't got one. And the days that we're living in, just like as he said in chapter 1 and verse 1, during the time of the judges, what time is that? In the days there was no king in Israel and everyone did whatever seemed right to him. You could write United States of America right across that verse. You could write the world earth right across that verse in our day there is no king in the united states matter of fact ain't no king in this world except satan and everyone is doing what's right in his own eyes the only hope the only answer for our world today 
the only hope and the only answer for the people that you are going to meet and come in contact with tomorrow, your friends, your family, your co-workers, your co-students, is Jesus Christ. And if we take the Naomi attitude, which many of us do, sad to say, if we take the Naomi attitude, those people are going to continue down that road to hell and to destruction. But if we take the Ruth attitude and if we allow the God of creation whom loved us and saved us and gave his life for us to live in us and to, to love through us, then there are those that we can reach. There are lives that we can touch and people that can be saved and, and rescued out of this dark, dark world that we live in. But we, folks, we have to be like Ruth. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with me tonight. Uh, remember, uh, this Sunday morning, I'll be back in the pulpit. I'm excited and uh, I'm, I'm ready. And uh, we will uh, we'll just be worshiping and praising God together and we'll be studying. This Sunday morning, the, the sermon topic will be the, the will of the Lord. We'll be looking in Acts chapter 20 and 21 and we'll be talking about the Lord's will. And um, I'm excited about that too. Again, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your love and your care for me, for my wife. And let's love somebody. Let's reach the world with the truth, no compromise. Amen. God bless you and thank you.